I'm Rona Rechik. As an arts historian and an educator, I like to identify members of the art world and analyze the roles that they play. On earlier programs on this series of Art Talk, we have met with and spoken to artists and dealers and critics. And today, our program would like to highlight a collector and a curator. Today's program Collecting Art, the Fine Arts and Antiques Collection of the Hartford Steam Boiler Inspection and Insurance Company is our subject, and our guest is Judith Lefebvre, Assistant Vice President and Curator of the Collection. Welcome, Judith, to Thank Art you. Talk. We're Thank very you. happy that you could come. Thank you. You know, when we talk about art being um, a reflection of a culture that produces it, we also talk about collections reflecting the taste and the time and the sensibility of their owner. Uh, is this uh, the definition that you go with for the collection that you've helped put together for the Hartford Steam Boilers very inspection? Much, very much so, Rona. Um, our collection of art really began in 1983. and. Um, we are, it, it started and, and is focused on Connecticut because we are very proud of our heritage. Our company was founded in, in Hartford in 1866, and uh, we, uh, we are very happy and very proud that our collection really uh, shows the beauty of our state and uh, also its history and speaks to the artists who traveled through Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So um, your, your art reflects uh, various places in Connecticut uh, that artists touched as they either lived here for a little while or studied here or actually were born here and made their life here. That's but it. it's a combination of all of those, is that it? It is. It's a combination of all of those things. Mm -hmm. And um, when we look at your art later, we'll be able to see how it's put together. Um, and we have on our table um, uh, the beautiful book that was put together um, to show the collection. When was this book made? That was made several years ago. Uh, it was done for our 125th anniversary celebration. Uh -huh. And uh, we, uh, it's, it's fairly current. That was just a few years it's ago. It's a beautiful book. You. Well, you were there when the idea um, got started for the, your company to own a collection of art. Um, so tell us, if you will, share with us, how did that all come to be? Well, it was very interesting. In the early 80s, our uh, company began to look for a new location for our home office building. And we wanted to stay in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, and I began working with the architects, uh, designing uh, spaces in the building, particularly for our executive floor. Uh, we were very fortunate uh, to have a member of our board at that time connected with the Florence Griswold Museum. And uh, Joan Sillen uh, introduced our president, Bill Wilde, to the Florence Griswold Museum. 
and we were uh, able, through Jeff Anderson, to have an exhibit of old Lyme art uh, for our opening in 1983. Mm -hmm. When we saw how beautiful it looked on the walls and how wonderfully well our employees responded and our guests responded, uh, Bill Wilde really thought that we should be looking uh, at ways to put a, a collection together. Mm -hmm. uh, our collection spans a period of time from about 1820 to about 1950. And it includes artists who uh, lived and traveled, as, as you said, and, and worked in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Artists who were very important to uh, American art as well. Mm -hmm. uh, people like Twachman and Hassam, um, Metcalf and others. Mm -hmm. And um, this overall collection is um, at the very time that you set it up because you had the offices first. The collection is in and among the offices. It's yes. not separate and apart. No, it isn't. Uh, and that's been a very interesting part of my job, trying to create uh, the setting uh, to best show the, these wonderful works. Um, it is on, as I said, on our executive floor, mm -hmm. and um, we uh, had to bring in the lighting afterwards, uh, ways to hang on the uh, paintings on the walls, uh, marble walls, instead of just uh, regular walls. So mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been an interesting process. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I notice in this book the um, collection is divided into the fine arts first and the um, uh, antiques right. later on, some magnificent pieces. Um, and uh, when we visited, you were so kind to um, offer us a visit to your uh, floor, and we were just delighted to see all the works um, and see how it combined with the offices and the people in the midst of working. Mm -hmm. um, we could see that they, unlike the book, where, of course, you had to separate it in order to show the plates as well as they could be shown. Um, the real life and nourishment of this collection is that the pieces, the high boys, sit beside the paintings, and the paintings sit beside the chairs, and the portraits are in uh, beautiful conference rooms. And um, it works out very well? Yes, it does. Uh, um, one of the, uh, I don't know if we'll see it, but one of the uh, settings that we have is what we call our Belden Wall, where we have installed two pieces of furniture that are set into the wall, as well as one of our finest paintings by uh, Frederick Church of the Charter Oak Tree, and it's all part of a, um, uh, a, a in, in situ, um, mm -hmm. a whole beautiful setup. Yeah. reflecting how it was before you bought it. Yes, we found those pieces in the uh, Elisha Strong House in Windsor, Connecticut, and the architect went out and really designed and put together um, uh, a location that included the fireplace uh, and having the two pieces placed just as they mm -hmm. were in the strong We house. will see that. Um, we'll, we'll share that view with uh, everyone in just a few minutes. We'll show some tape. Um, on location uh, at the company. Um, but just tell us um, for the moment about the furniture collection, an overview kind of. Um, these pieces are also reflective of the attitude and the history of your company? Absolutely. Uh, and we began the antiques collection in 1978, uh, just a few years ahead of the art. Um, we work with a wonderful man, Paul Coda who considers, we consider an antiquarian and a wonderful cabinet maker. And he has been able to locate pieces of furniture for us that were made in Hartford and in Connecticut uh, and are beautiful and are useful as well. Mm -hmm. oh, you use them? You, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, they are very beautiful. And um, along with Mr. Coda, do you have other helpers? Um, that are on an advisory panel to help you keep the art and antiques the way they must be kept or help you sure. buy? What do you, sure. How do you do that? Well, the, the way we acquire art is, is basically a committee process, and there are four members of the art committee. There's our uh, chairman and chief executive officer, Wilson Wild, 
Uh, we have Jeffrey Anderson from the Florence Griswold Museum. He is the director there. Uh, Chairman Emeritus, uh, Charles Ferguson from the New Britain oh, Museum. Mm -hmm, emeritus, and, sure. Yeah, and myself. And those are the four members of the committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we review uh, occasionally pieces of art uh, to be uh, considered to be How fired. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a look at the video now. Um, we will uh, be on the executive floor at the Hartford Steam Boiler Inspection and Insurance Company. Um, let's take a look and see what it looks like um, when we um, arrive on that floor.
Well, you can see from all of these wonderful pictures that um, there's so much to talk about. The, almost the very last picture was um, of that wonderful woman in New London, um, Ralph Earl's picture. Right. We were looking at it earlier, and yeah. then we just showed it again. What was that little part in the back? Well, Ralph Earl uh, would, in his portraits, uh, he is known for putting in little descriptions, painting little descriptions of his sitters. And uh, the, the portrait is of Mrs. Guy Richards, and she was the wife of a very wealthy New London uh, merchant here in town. Mm -hmm. So in, in his little descriptive uh, illustration, Earl put in um, some of the merchant ships coming in, the dock in New London, and in the back, uh, is a cemetery, uh, and I'm, I don't know my New London geography quite perfectly, but in the cemetery is buried her son, and there's a, a very sad story about Mrs. Richard's son who fought in the Revolutionary Army, and he was captured and sent to England, and from England he escaped through France, and he came back to the United States and he went off to, to fight in the revolution yet again, and he was killed, mm -hmm. and he was brought home to New London and buried there. Mm -hmm. So that sort of is a little uh, tableau of, mm -hmm. of Mrs. Richard's life. Well, the, in that square, it probably isn't geographically so correct as it is a summary of New London. Yes. There was the waterfront and yes. the beaches and the cemetery and right. various parts that meant something to her, probably, right. that were all kind of exactly. put together yeah. in a summary form. Yeah. Well, there were lots of things, too, that, were, uh, that we just did an overview of, some that were um, views um, that, uh, of specific places uh, that you say the, the, the company cared in their collection to pinpoint certain parts of Connecticut to uh, create um, a very, um, this is our home atmosphere of our collection right. is a very much a part of our attitude. Is that what you were saying earlier? Yes. Is that yes. why those scenes of the Lieutenant River uh, we saw, we'll see some more later on, right. of perhaps the Farmington River I know is in your collection yes. as well. Yeah. Um, there are uh, lots of various people, uh, and we'll see in a few minutes um, another gallery showing the portraits of the presidents, the founders of the company. That's rather unusual to be able to have a portrait of a founder even way back when. We're very lucky. We have uh, had eight uh, prior presidents and just because of tradition each president's portrait has been painted and uh, uh, Wilson Wiles is not hung there at this time, but our ninth president was just elected uh -huh. uh, by our board. Um, so it, it does speak of to, to our history. Really. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, let's take a look at the portrait gallery now of the founders. This is the book again, beautiful book shown. Um, is there um, something I see in the very beginning? Uh, Mr. Wilde has written um, a, a foreword, just a little foreword. Um, is there any plan for his uh, photograph to be done yet? 
we have had uh, his portrait completed, and uh, it will be installed at some point in the not too distant future. Uh huh. And uh, the various portraits are done by different uh, artists, I would think. Yes, they are. Uh, it's interesting, I think, that the, the quality of, of, of those paintings. Uh, one of them uh, was done by Charles Noel Flagg, who was a very prominent artist in his time. And um, I, it, it, there, some of them are really remarkable. Has it, Mr. Wilson's yet been chosen, his artist? Uh, yes, it has. Uh, oh, great. Well, we look forward to seeing it. Um, the art that we saw in the overview um, shows us that the, the style, although it's fairly traditional, does run a couple of, uh, a little breath anyway. There's mm -hmm. a, a great deal of American Impressionism, yes. and there's the early portraits. Right. Um, do you keep away from certain kinds of styles in your collection? No, I, th I think that the, uh, the focus, or the, well, no, it, in the beginning, what, what we collected around were the old lime painters, which were, of course, very, very impressionistic. And uh, that was sort of the basis of the collection. We've gone into early portrait work, uh, still lives. Um, we've got some, some lovely portraits that uh, uh, artists have done when they were students in Paris. I'm thinking of Vano particularly. There's a beautiful uh, Walter Griffin portrait there. Uh, S Milton Avery is the last painter that's represented in our collection. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell people when they come to, the, to see the collection that this is indeed a Milton Avery. It was yes, done, it doesn't look like a no, Milton Avery at It all. was done very early in his career. Uh, and it's uh, of a scene in, in um, East Hartford. Mm -hmm. It was acquired through his family, so I feel comfortable that indeed it is a Milton Avery. But mm -hmm. uh, that's about the, the limit of, of the collection. And that primarily uh, is a reflection of, uh, of the art committee. We feel that uh, you know, this is where our expertise is. Charlie Ferguson clearly with the earlier painters, uh, Jeff Anderson with the more uh, impressionistic uh, later painters. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful collection and it could very well be that um, as your collection grows you may in fact decide to include later Connecticut artists or artists that painted at a later date in Connecticut that responded to a more modern kind of aesthetic uh, taste, Absolutely. but you, you, you will be very anxious to see sure whether that'll happen again uh, or not. Um, we are going to break for just a few moments um, for a public service announcement uh, that the Griffiths Arts Center is very happy to uh, put forth to all of our listeners, um, highlighting beautiful art uh, that is in public spaces around the Connecticut region.
art is a process that fills our lives. See it. Enjoy it. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Griffiths Art Center, New London, Connecticut. We're back in the studio now. I'm Rona Rutchick, and we're talking with Judith Lefebvre, the Assistant Vice President and Curator of the Fine Art and Antique Collection at the Hartford Steam Boiler Inspection and Insurance Company in Hartford. We're so glad you're here with us in the studio, uh, and we're being able to um, transport our imagination and our uh, visual, visuals with the video so that we can be in two places at once. Isn't that kind of interesting to be able to do this? So that we can share with our listeners and our viewers this, some of the beautiful collection that we had a chance to share um, a few days ago. Um, we've, we've seen some of the art now in overview, and we're going to see another um, few. But um, um, let's talk some more about um, some of what we just saw. Sure. On that uh, beautiful Belden wall uh, that we looked at, where the two Chippendale-type uh, mm -hmm. furniture pieces were uh, flanking the fireplace, mm -hmm. uh, tell us, if you will, again, about those pieces. Um, they were found here? They were found in Windsor, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mr. Cota found them in a house that uh, was called the, is called the Elisha Strong House. Um, I don't quite know why. They were recessed pieces of furniture. And I, I may, you may recall when I pulled out the drawer, you can see that they're uh, full-size drawers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was probably, they were probably built that way mm -hmm. to conserve space in the house. Perhaps the depth of the room wasn't deep That's enough right. for the usual way for a high boy and a secretary to be shown right. would be sticking out right. um, on either side of a fireplace right. or whatever. And they were on either side of a fireplace. And just as you, you see them in the wall, uh, we were really taken uh, by the, uh, the beauty of the pieces, and we wanted to create a place uh, in our offices that would really show them to the best advantage. Mm -hmm. And what we did was have the architect go out to the strong house, and, and he noticed a lot of the details. You see the uh, dental work in the, um, uh, in, uh, over, the, uh, over the mantelpiece and whatnot. And he created and built out this wall so that we could place these two pieces inside. Um, and so that when we come to visit that room, uh, it's very unusual, yes. but it's wonderful to see the whole thing on a flat wall, the fireplace and the two pieces yes. of furniture. Well, now we're going to take a look at um, some other art that you have on the uh, penthouse floor on the 20th floor right. uh, in the dining room area. Let's right. take a look at that and then we'll talk about it um, in a minute.
of the views as we look out the window could easily be paintings. Uh, and in fact, earlier, some of the views that we saw seemed to be paintings until we saw traffic going by. Uh, this really is a painting in that beautiful uh, larger private room upstairs and these in the halls. We just saw something that was um, the Lieutenant River in Olan, didn't we, right. in that room? Yes, we saw the Lieutenant River, and then we also saw a Talcott moonlight picture. This that we're looking at... Talcott from Olan. Right. Yes. This is a Davis, uh, something that he probably painted when he was in France. Uh -huh. And up there in that dining room, tell us something about the beautiful china. The tables were set so beautifully. Oh, and look. Oh, they're Mr. Voorhees' cows. Here are the cows. Yes. Yeah, we have about three paintings that, uh, that he did. And uh, I'm sorry, that was Volker. This is a painting by uh, uh, Platt. Platt. Uh, oh, there's our beautiful Charter Oak. The Charter Oak tree. By church. Uh -huh. Frederick Church. That, I think, is one of the pivotal paintings of the collection. A beautiful, beautiful desk. It's a beautiful with... desk uh, that was uh, done out of uh, Tiger Maple, and that's one of George Dury's uh, Seven Mile to Farmington, uh, one of his famous Connecticut paintings. Uh, anyone who has been in Connecticut has, has seen, seen those uh, paintings before. This is such a beautiful uh, uh, visitor, kind of holiday postcard yeah. kind of painting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so much so uh, of what Connecticut really is uh, for so many people who think of the perception of Connecticut right in that picture. Right. This is another Dury painting of East Rock in New Haven. Uh, you see the sort of calm before the storm. This was painted in 1860. We're seeing part of the frames. All of our frames uh, are very important to our paintings, and uh, we find as many original as we can, um, uh, period frames or, or uh, reproduction frames. But this painting was done in about 1860 and shows sort of the calm, serene landscape. This is a Brevoort painting of the Farmington River. Uh, I don't know if you can quite see it here, but there is a church steeple in the back and a man fishing on the, the back of the river, banks of the river, rather. It's a wonderful Carlton Wiggins uh, painting of, of sheep by the sea. Are the frames done uh, by special people on your advisory committee, or you have special people working with you on the we, we work with... Uh, people at uh, the Wadsworth Athenaeum right now has been very helpful in, in helping us with the conservation of the paintings as well as the frames. This is a wonderful painting done by both George and James Smiley in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Uh, it's very rare that you see a painting done by two artists. This is uh, an Edward Rook painting um, and there we have, we are fortunate enough to have the actual objects that were painted. Um, and uh, our staff keeps them supplied with grapes and apples so that they... And they're real. They're real, yeah. yeah. It's a wonderful painting, and it, it sits is. beautifully above uh, a, a wonderful piece of furniture. The uh, side, the, the Hartford sideboard, mm, yeah. It's a wonderful piece. That's one of the ways we try to integrate uh, the antiques in with the furniture. Mm -hmm. And the, the space seems to work out very well, because although, as you say, you had the hallways and the arrangement of offices figured out first, um, these art objects were then added, yet there are places where distance can be, you can step back and, and have some distance before you see it and some things that you walk upon um, as you come to um, them down a hallway and, and other places that are more um, uh, personal and intimate. Um, it really is amazing that it works so well. I would imagine you pick things. For uh, yeah, and I try to be very conscious of the space and the light that, that I'm working with, so that when we have uh, a hallway that is narrow, I try putting as many of the smaller objects as I possibly can fit on one of those walls. Mm -hmm. uh, and where we have a little bit more room, having um, uh, you know, uh, something that requires a little more vista, when you first come off the elevators, when you come on the 12th floor, having that wonderful painting by Olinsky 
of the uh, girl, the full-length portrait. Uh, you need space to see some of these paintings right. to their best advantage. Well, like when we went into the dining room and our first visions on the video just a few moments ago was that wonderful view outside the window. Right. And then, and, and that was just so spectacular. As I say, it, a lot of it looked like a painting mm -hmm. as well. Um, but uh, then we were able to see those beautiful still lifes on the far wall right. and the entire dining room can see that um, when there, when it was set for lunch, and just a few moments after we left, luncheon was being served to a whole dining room full of people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they enjoyed very much having those beautiful paintings on the sideboards. Uh, but I see too, as we went along, marvelous flowers, fresh flowers, and plants, carefully set to show off as well as they do the paintings and the furniture. Mm -hmm. Are you in charge of that sort of thing yeah. as well? Yeah. yeah, we try to make uh, the environment as, as attractive as we can. Of course, keeping in mind that, um, you know, the art and the antiques are what we're primarily trying to show. But we want to have our visitors and our employees um, experience uh, something very special when they come either to the Polytechnic Club, which is on the 20th floor, our dining room, or uh, to, the, to the 12th floor. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this uh, role that you play as part of the corporation is a very important role that uh, uh, has to do with really all the employees mm -hmm. in that they work in these spaces and they, their, their corporate visitors, their business contacts come and see them in these places. and and the, the work that you do, that you supply for their ambiance, mm -hmm. uh, very much speaks their attitude of their uh, company, I would think. Yes, uh, we're all proud uh, of, uh, you know, of, of what we uh, have, have acquired in, in the past uh, 10 years or so. And of that floor, um, one of the programs that uh, I'm most enthusiastic about is our docent program. And uh, I, was, I, I wanted employees to feel that they were part uh, of these collections as well. And several years ago, um, we began uh, a program to uh, expose and to educate employees uh, to the art. And um, my assistant, Randy Brandt, is just great at doing this. We now have a group of about 35 employees, men, women, um, all levels of the company, um, who come periodically and, and learn and give of their free time. Mm -hmm. They're very uh, enthusiastic about giving tours of the collection. They give up their evenings, their Saturdays, to either learn or to uh, take groups through the collection. I see. So it's a very... Um, it's a kind of a very enthusiastic and spontaneous uh, group. Well, that's, uh, I think, would think that that helps a great deal in company camaraderie as well. They have something else to be, uh, uh, to care about together. Yes. Uh, they have something else yeah. in common. Um, I understand that you um, are also in, in charge of setting up uh, the beautiful offices um, within the, the uh, executive floors. And um, um, we have some tape of uh, one of the offices. Um, maybe you can tell us something about it. Sure. This was an office uh, that I helped design with our architects for one of our directors, who is also an executive vice president of our corporation from uh, Texas. And Note the cactus. Huh? <laughs> That's right. And I wanted uh, Don Carlton to, to feel comfortable in a space uh, and sort of reflect uh, in, in a, as traditional a way as I could uh, some of the, um, the wonderful things that we have, including the art. So I, uh, he has a great view out his window as you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, Wonderful scene. But I, I tried to pick art and fabrics uh, that, you know, had brightness to them, sun, light. Mm -hmm. uh, pick the, uh, the cactus because, of course, that I thought is being very southwest. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's been a quite, a quite a success, I think. Yes, it's a wonderful room. I loved especially the furniture and the low chest uh, that you will use as a cocktail table right. or a, a business papers kind of table right. that you always need to, uh, as you have a conference, put, there's always things to lay out on a table. Right, well, when we design spaces, we, we do them for comfort and uh, uh, keeping with the style and, and the more traditional feeling uh, that, that the whole environment has created. Uh-huh. So when you're, this job and role of yours is to, uh, is, is broader than just the paintings on the wall. It is far more than just uh, accessories. It's a matter of uh, the spaces in which they will work uh, so that they can work well and work with each other. That's right. And you try to bring a little of them into it as well as a little of Absolutely. the company credo. Right. And you use for glue that whole Connecticut tradition of hard work, hard play, right. and friendship. That's right. Is that one of the kinds of things that shows, it yeah. seems to show through the collection. Very much so. We're very proud of our heritage, uh, of our, our tradition, and um, I, I think that shows in what we've mm -hmm. been doing. Uh, uh, many of these paintings show very specific, uh, I, I s suggested it earlier, places. Um, and these places, uh, I suppose, were the places that famous artists um, used as, uh, as pictorial, uh, not only spots, but also places where they had schools and they learned from each other. Yes. Old uh, Lyme, for Old instance. Old Lyme is, is a key example. But um, a lot of the, most of the artists, a lot of, uh, well, I'm thinking of people like Guy Wiggins, Hassan, whatnot, would paint in the winter uh, in New York and then they would leave and, and go up the coast uh, through Connecticut, up into Gloucester, up into Maine, uh, Hassam, of course, to the Isle of Shoals in Maine. Uh, Talkman taught painting uh, in Gloucester, and they would paint along the way. As so your went. collection then would not only have perhaps a child Hassam that was painted while he was at the Florence Griswold in that neighborhood, but also perhaps a painting from some other location that, that you would find him at another time. That's right. I, I, ideally, we would, we would only have Connecticut painters and beautiful Connecticut subjects. But uh, in order to represent the artist, we, of course, have, have paintings from along the coast. We tried to keep them to New England, but we have uh, paintings that were done in, in Paris uh, and, in, and in France and in other places in the world when they traveled. Um, Metcalf, when he traveled to um, uh, Biskra in uh, Algeria, mm -hmm. uh, we have there was an exotic there. painting yes. there. Uh, work that he did in England, uh -huh. uh, work that Davis did in France when he was there. So all of those kind of show the the breadth and the scope uh, of the artists and the environment in which they painted and learned. I see. So that they, within their own little lives. Their, the collection, although you don't keep all the child Hassams together and all the Metcalfs together, as you visit the collection, you can get a little summary of the kinds of lives that they had right. and some of the places they touched and that touched them enough to get into a painting. Well, it's quite wonderful to see so many particular spots in Connecticut that is represented in the show, and I should think that that's uh, something you're very proud of. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We have some more video of uh, some more of the paintings. Um, let's take a look at them now. This is uh, Walter Griffin's painting of a lady in Paris. She's there in her Worth costume, and she's uh, displayed right over a beautiful piece of. Uh, really uh, interesting desk with many drawers. Nobody can quite figure out what all those drawers are for. This is a Lawson, a uh, Lawson painted in New York, and uh, this was probably done up in Vermont. Very typical beautiful winter style. scene. Beautiful winter scene. This is a Wilson Irvine painting done in Farmington, Connecticut, which shows just about the fall of the year mm -hmm. with a corn. Each of the seasons is represented beautifully through yeah. the New England states yeah. as you walk the collection. 
This is a Dwight Tryon painting. Uh, Tryon was a, a painter who, who lived and worked in Glastonbury, Connecticut. A very influential, a great teacher. Um, the Whites of uh, Waterford, uh, there's a great influence, I think, there. The Davis painting, again, probably done in, in France. Now, most of these paintings are um, of the, uh, in the style of Impressionism or Barbizon School. That's a Hassan. This is a beautiful child, Hassan. Yes. Uh, he did a whole series of women uh, looking out of windows. Uh, and uh, this is just a great one with beautiful red geraniums, probably done fairly early in his career. One of the Hassans, as I recall, seems to me to be within the dining room of the Florence Griswold. Uh, is it? Is that really the view? What is this one? This one is a, this is a, a Nelson White painting uh, that wonderful. was done. Mm -hmm. I believe it's Noag, it's another white painting. Mm -hmm. These are in one of the conference rooms, conference as I recall. Rooms, yes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful fall scene. That's a little sketch. Talcott uh, came and, and painted uh, sketches and we we have three of his, his small sketches. This is uh, a fall scene that he did here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. He would then go take these sketches and, and make larger paintings. One of the most successful paintings, I think, in our collection is Trockman. Trockman studied in um, uh, Munich with Duvenac, and he, he painted this of Koskab. That's a um, Voorhees painting. Yeah. It's a, a moonlit uh, winter scene. Do you uh, own the rights to all these paintings to be able to reproduce yes. them, use them yeah. for holiday cards, calendars? We do, yeah. Oh, and look at this. This is a wonderful Guy Wiggins. Uh, that's Washington. Guy yeah, Washington's birthday. Um, and the all the flags and the snows in New York, yeah. Beautiful colors in that painting, too. Yeah. Another wonderful rook uh, of the laurels. This traveled to... Uh, to uh, Switzerland, to Lugano, to be in a, an American Impressionism show. Uh, so you do, you do take your paintings and, and allow them to be on loan oh, in various places? Yes, for, as much as we can. Yeah. For educational purposes? For educational more. purposes, And this yeah. beautiful? Oh, that's an Ebert, a Charles yeah. Ebert of a house in Old Lyme. He had a wonderful color, sense of color. Yeah beautiful Stanford a white frame. Palette, as yeah. well as a wonderful brush stroke that he kind of had. Uh, Very look free. at that gorgeous frame. This is a, a child Hassan called Ten Pound Island which is off the coast of Gloucester mm -hmm. that he painted. The frames are so important to this these, yeah. uh, showing of these pictures. Yeah, they are. This is another uh, Gloucester painting. This is by Twachman. Mm -hmm. This was done in 1902 probably the year that he died. Mm -hmm. But there you see a very uh, impressionistic feeling in the front of the painting. Mm -hmm. So later Metcalf painting that he did up in uh, a small village in New Hampshire. Beautiful Isle of Shoals by uh, Hassam. This is new to our collection, or newer to our collection, uh, and was in a private collection for many years. This is a beautiful little Matilda Brown, and that's of the Van Wyck home. She was a Van Wyck by marriage, and that's down near where the South Street Seaport would be in New York. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this painting. This is a John Ferguson Weir of East Rock, Connecticut. East Rock in New Haven, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Of East Rock in New yeah. Haven. And but beautiful tones and, and painting in that, and just the kind of atmosphere that you see in warm November days. Mm -hmm. There's a little painting uh, by Julian Alden Weir of his father, Robert. Mm -hmm. The Weir farm has just reopened, hasn't it? That's to right. Accept visitors to see yeah. where they painted. This is a very popular painting by Matilda Brown. It's, it's new to us. There's a, a child in, in a garden in front of Clark Voorhees' house. Um, in Old Line. In Old Line, yeah. yeah. A beautiful depicted flower. Yeah. This is a Lillian Westcott Hale. Um, she was a wonderful painter and, and, and did many studies of, of women. Yeah, there's Mr. Volkert's cows. Mm -hmm. Another one of this. Cows have uh, been one of the wonderful old Lyme visions oh, throughout yeah. the history of painting, I yeah, think. Yeah. 
This and is they're a, still being painted. Too. They are. Well, they're such great models. They just stand still. <laughs> this is a wonderful Dumond painting of a garden path. Dumont taught art as well. Uh, Charles Davis of the um, uh, Mystic River, just at twilight. Beautiful, beautiful um, sunset view. Yeah. This painting is a good example to talk about the kinds of styles within this collection, the way in which an artist captures his subject. Not only does this collection show that the subject matter was important, the place, right. the spot, the mm -hmm. time, but the collection shows a great deal about um, this, the, the coloration, the way in which light refracts and reflects. Um, and among these painters uh, that you've chosen for your collection, there uh, is somewhat of a breadth of style. Absolutely. There's uh, the collection, really. You could spend so much time uh, just going through and seeing the various styles that the artist used. You talked about Ebert and, you know, his free, easy brushwork with, with uh, what you would consider almost bizarre colors. Mm -hmm. um, you get Hassan's shorter, uh, shorter strokes, uh, different palettes where he used lots of paint. Uh, and, in, and you can see that in Metcalf's work. What I like, uh, too, about the collection is that if, if you pick a painter, I'm, and this is, this is a wonderful aspect of it, such as Metcalf, you can go through and see his earlier work uh, and uh, the kind of techniques and style that he used and, and how that grew and that changed through the years. When he came back from uh, Munich, he used uh, almost pure black pigment, which was the style at that time. Uh, then uh, in Cornish, New Hampshire, where he painted wonderful paintings. And then toward the end of his life, we saw that one painting of a landscape of a village up in Vermont that was very loosely painted. And the canvas is almost showing through. Well, it, it, there's so much to see and learn from this collection, and I don't want another minute to go by without um, telling you, too, that we noticed a, a wonderfully good percentage of women artists yeah. that are collected uh, among these wonderful works. Um, if a special interest group cared about taking a look at your collection for educational purposes, might they call and make an appointment? Absolutely. Yeah. We'd be delighted. Well, that's wonderful. Um, we um, are very, very happy to have you and to be able to have a look at the collection um, that you have in Hartford. And we thank you so much for being with us and for um, inviting us to spend a day amongst the beautiful paintings and yeah. uh, antiques uh, on the 12th and 20th floor. Um, we hope you've enjoyed um, uh, our uh, show today highlighting a collector and a curator and that among the, all the weekly shows that you watch, we hope that you do watch, that you can put the collector and the creator in a place so that you understand what uh, role they have in the art world. Thank you. We'll see you next week. This is Rona Rutchik for Art Talk. <laughs>